I first heard about Kashmir through friends who had traveled there in the winter to ski and loved it. They talked about it as an exotic destination in the foothills of the Himalaya with this gondola that went up to 4,000 meters. To me, it sounded like a skier's paradise. It wasn't until I did some more research that it seemed Kashmir was either hell or had just been through it. When I finally made it in 2009, getting off the plane in Srinagar was confronting to say the least. There were bunkers and soldiers with guns on every corner, even in rural areas. What was interesting though was how quickly I became desensitized. The military just became part of the landscape. I spent a month skiing and along the way became friends with some of the locals. They would recount stories of how during the 60s and 70s their hotels, restaurants and houseboats had been full with tourists on the hippie trail. That all changed when an armed struggle for independence from India began in 1989. The tourists just stopped coming. In recent years though, the violence has subsided and now people are just waiting for foreigners to return. Here in the Kashmir Valley, almost everyone carries a kongri during the winter. You could say it is a symbol of Kashmiri culture. Here, particularly in rural areas, the electricity likes to play hide and seek, making it very cold. Congress have her keep us warm all the time. It is carried under a fern and heats us wherever we are. During the war that engulfed the valley throughout the 90s, we almost lost the right to wear our ferns. It was feared that we could conceal weapons underneath them. Fern or no fern, one congri or a dozen, those were very dark and very cold years. The trouble in Kashmir began in 1947 when the English withdrew from the subcontinent, creating India and Pakistan. The princely state of Jammu and Kashmir was given the choice of acceding to one or the other. Kashmir sought independence. When Pakistan unleashed a tribal invasion in a bid to annex the Muslim-majority state, the Maharaja turned to India for help. The Indian army came to Kashmir's defense upon the condition that Kashmir acceded to India. In 1948, the United Nations intervened, granting the people of Jammu and Kashmir the right to self-determination. This was never realized, and the army never left. After rigged elections in 1987, the people of Kashmir gave up on the democratic process, and youth began crossing the line of control to receive arms and training. They left as boys and returned as soldiers seeking freedom. When I was very young in the militancy, when it started in 89, some of my class fellows, they were misguided by some other people. 
and then they start to be a militant and some of them were killed and some died on the boat or something. But my idea was on the mountain, not to take gun on the shoulder. I took my skis on the shoulder and went all the time skiing on the mountain and I love it. When I got my first uh, K2 ski, they were from Martin Johns from New Zealand. He gave me a set of pistol skis and it was the third day skiing with him. And on the fourth day I told him, oh, I'm sick, I will not come tomorrow with you. And on the fourth day, just I was not really sick. I went myself skiing alone on the mountain, just free ride. Like my, it was really a big difference in my skis because from narrow skis I came on good powder skis. Just suddenly it changed my whole life. It was a big U-turn in my life not to go. Completing my uni degree, I had a commerce degree, but I say, no, I will not go to UAE, I do some different thing. They say, what? So I go on mountains, do guiding. They were laughing on me, oh, Bella, you're going guiding like after a business degree. But now, from last five to six years, my business is going very successful every year. The most frustrating thing for me is the video, the magazines and the people who work on these projects and show like Kashmir as in Stone Age, War Zone, Religious Fundamental, but it's not like that. It's a bit, but it's not like 100% what they're showing in the video and on the internet. My dream is heli skiing in Gulmarg, so I'm just working on it from last five years. I was trying my best this year, 2010, but due to some defense reasons, it did not work out on it. In Kashmir, it's like tradition when you go 24 year or 25 year old, so you need to go marry and make some kids. But I'm like 28 years old and still I'm not married. I have some bad skin and some good time with some different girls all the time. So I'm loving it. Uh, my guiding job is really the best job, I think. Because the foreigners, they come for their holidays and that's my work. My future is not gun, not war. My future is powder, and ski in the powder and kill the powder. That's my future. Anthony and I have skied a lot together in the backcountry. When he returned from Kashmir the first time and talked about going back to dig deeper, I became interested. The prospect of exploring the mountains and experiencing a different culture at the same time really excited me. I was more nervous about being in the mountains and having something go wrong than the travel advisory. There are hospitals, but emergency assistance is limited and there's no rescue helicopter. We were going to be on our own in the backcountry. Before I arrived in Kashmir, I knew something had happened, but I had no idea what and why. People in Gulmarg would talk about the insurgency if I asked, but otherwise they were more interested in talking about the beauty of Kashmir. They really wanted us to go home with positive things to say.
हम ये कह सकते हैं कि हमारे इस कश्मीर में कोई कोई वसाइल नहीं है बगे टूरिस्ट के लोग ये कहते हैं कि कश्मीर में खतरा है हिंदुस्तानियों को भी और जो फॉरेनर लोग आते हैं उनको भी हाँ हम ये कहते हैं कि कश्मीर में मिलिट्री है क्योंकि ये आज ही नहीं है ये ये आज से दस, दस साल पहले भी थी हाँ हम ये कहते हैं कि कश्मीर में प्रॉब्लम्स है मुश्किल है ये खाली कश्मीर में नहीं है बल्कि ये पूरे दुनिया में प्रॉब्लम्स है हाँ हम ये चाहते हैं कि जो कश्मीर है कश्मीर में कश्मीर फिर भी एक अच्छी जगह बन जाए और जब जब ताकि तमाम लोग यहाँ से यहाँ पे आए और, और अपना एंजॉय ले ले अपना मज़ा ले ले इट वॉज मॉर्निंग एट ओ क्लॉक द सोल्जर हैव नॉक माई डोर एंड आई ओपन माई डोर आज कल यू आर याकूब एंड आई सेन ऑफ कोर्स आई एम ही टू कमीट गार्डन अक्रॉस एंड देन आई मेट द ऑफिसर ही टोल्ड मी डू यू बिलोंग बिलोंग टू के एल एफ और हिजबुल मुजाहिदीन टू वन ऑफ द टू आई सेट नो सॉरी आई डोंट बिलोंग टू एनी पार्टी फाइनली दे ही ऑर्डर हिज सबॉर्नेट्स टू टेक मी इन द हट वाई दे हैव इंट्रोगेटेड मी दे बीटेड मी लाइक एनी थिंग विद द आयरन रॉड्स विद एनी थिंग विद वूड एंड सो मैनी थिंग्स आई कैन नॉट एक्सप्लेन यू द टाइम आई रिमेंबर आई एम I am scared that I should not any more be here. This was the reason why I was outside uh, Kashmir for uh, say 14 years. Yeah, 14 years. In 80s, no doubt, the Kashmir was a paradise on earth. But in 90s, uh, I don't hesitate to say that this was a hell on the earth. the house boat is a unique in whole india so we call it heritage people were preferring that they should stay in house boats where they are treated not as a guest but a member family in 60s 70s 80s the world famous personalities have stayed in house boats like uh, commissioners of uh, embassies music directors and of course the beatles brand of 70 In the year 1989, when it was a normal scene in Kashmir, we had more than 50 guests stayed in our houseboat, as per the record of the guest book. While as in 90, after the disturbances in Kashmir, we had just a one in 1990. How we were supposed to survive with a one guest in a one year? Can you imagine? Driving from the airport to Gomarg to meet up with the crew, our jeep encountered a group of boys with masks throwing stones. I was aware of the situation in Kashmir before I arrived, but I wasn't sure how it would affect my trip. I don't know if the stones were directed at us or not, but it definitely altered our rhythm. While the Kashmiris I met afterwards were keen to put the war behind them, that incident really showed that Kashmir could still be quite volatile.
One of the really unique things about Gomark is the gondola. It takes you up to almost 4,000 meters, and there is amazing backcountry skiing in every direction. So long as we didn't ski into Pakistan, we were pretty much free to ski where we wanted. The gondola just needed to be open. When I first began as snow safety officer at Gulmarg in 2007, I presented a snow safety plan to the government that included explosives use for avalanche control. The government heeded my advice and we were supplied with military class explosives. This however posed an entirely new challenge because now I had to communicate and educate Indians as well as Kashmiri ski patrol. On top of this, military explosives are different to the mining grade explosives that we regularly use in ski resorts in the west. I would ask how much plastic explosives are needed to make a meter deep hole in the snow, to which the military would respond, you can use this much plastic explosives to blow up a bridge of this size. It's just totally different uses. For the beginning, yeah. pehle, pehle each, each charge would just receive one bead of tape, but no more, because we have little tape today, just okay. a little bit. Okay. 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 In the context of the Kashmir conflict, it is remarkable that here in Golmark we now have the military working alongside Kashmiri ski patrollers. Not only are they working together, but they are building bombs no less. These are bombs of peace, not of war or terror. It could be argued that these bombs are playing a role in rebuilding Kashmir. By enabling this incredible mountain to open for skiers, it's encouraging foreigners to return. With my ski racing, I aspire to represent India at the Winter Olympics in different disciplines like slalom, GS, super G, downhills. Another reason I race is to promote Gulmarg internationally. I train on the upper mountain when it's open, but when it's closed, I come down to train on the golf course. It's not usually good there because I mean, it's a golf course. It is frustrating coming back to Gulmarg after training in Europe or New Zealand. But I love Gulmarg. It's my home. With my ski racing, I have traveled to many other countries and I realize Gulmarg still has a long way to go. For example, the gondola needs to be open at 8 instead of 10. We need more reliable electric city and we need to learn to respect nature, but we will get there. My father and I run a ski shop here in Gulmarg. With the conflict in the 90s, things were not so good. But since the phase two of the gondola opened in 2005, foreigners are returning and business is much better. Foreigners will see things here in Kashmir that they won't see anywhere else on a ski holiday.
Good things are happening in Kashmir because of the gondola and winter tourism. Skiing is an entirely new opportunity for Kashmiris and they are really embracing it. Because of skiing, foreigners like ourselves are once again traveling to Kashmir. A hotel owner was telling me that one tourist can contribute to over a dozen families. For example, the taxi driver gets to work, the houseboat owners, shikara drivers, handicraft sellers, ski guides and so on. It seems small. But after 15 years of war, the contribution of winter tourism is tangible. Kashmiris were famed for their hospitality for over a century, and they just want to be able to keep doing what they're good at. The struggle for justice and a solution to the Kashmir conflict is ongoing but the violence of the 90s has largely subsided. If the people can keep building on the relative peace they have now, who knows, maybe Kashmir can be a paradise again. Mm -hmm.